I don't even know where to start with this video. Oh. You may or may not have heard via social media that I'm going to retire from racing at the end of this year. But before I get into why I'm retiring, I'm going to take you through the Donington Park race weekend that I've just had, which I think was the best race of my entire career. And the funny thing about it is I nearly didn't film anything from the weekend because leading up to the race, it was one of my worst race weekends ever. So I'll take you through from start to finish what happened and <laughs> why I've got a sore throat now. Just for the vlog, I won one. <laughs> <sighs> Friday free practice, we made some pretty big changes with the bike. We, I mean, it's no secret over the last few rounds, we've really struggled. I've gone from winning races at the start of the year to sometimes struggling to be in the top five. And coming into the weekend, we had two rounds left and I kind of just sat down with a... Oh, here's Taz coming in. <laughs> That's going in. Drop coffee. <laughs> So coming into the weekend, I decided with a team that we needed to try something pretty radical if we were going to um, improve the bike because we'd had so many weekends now in a row where we'd really struggled and in the back of my mind I knew I was going to retire at the end of the year and I wanted to have a good end to the season and whatever we were doing wasn't really working. So we tried something really drastic and that did not work at all. We were even worse off on the Friday. And yeah, so Friday night, I was pretty annoyed. Um, Donington Park is one of my favourite tracks. Even after this weekend now, I'm still unbeaten there in the dry uh, on a Superstock bike in any race that I've finished in. So that's the sort of form that I've got at Donington and I wanted to continue that this weekend. And on the Friday, I was nowhere. I was getting passed by people. I didn't have a good feeling with the bike at all. And yeah, we were just in a bit of a mess really. So Friday um, didn't fill me with any confidence at all. And even worse than that, on Saturday, the heavens opened and we had some pretty horrible weather conditions at Donington. If you saw that any of the racing on the Saturday, you'll have seen how wet and miserable and cold it was and how many people were crashing. And for me, I didn't have much confidence with the bike. Um, we were struggling, struggling with the traction control settings that we had and it was all just a bit of a mess really. So. I was so annoyed and I was, I was getting bored of recording videos where I'm miserable and I didn't think it was good for my channel to, to just keep boring people with average videos of me riding, me being miserable, um, not being myself and yeah, I decided that I wasn't going to film anything and I also hadn't done many laps during the weekend because the weather conditions were bad and I didn't really get much footage. So Saturday came, I qualified horrendously, I was 18th, I didn't have any feeling with the bike, absolutely dreading the first race and the second race to be honest. So the first race came and we kind of decided as a team because by this point we discussed me retiring and I kind of decided that at this stage in the season, it wasn't worth injuring myself. And if I wasn't feeling it in the race, then I'd just stop. So I set off in the race, I was 18th. I dropped back to 19th and I was having moments left, right and centre. I saved two massive high sides and yeah, it was just a disaster. So I was riding around in 19th. There was absolutely nothing to be gained except potentially me crashing and injuring myself. So I pulled in the pits on the third lap. It's something I've never done in my career before. I've never pulled out of a race. I've always, no matter how bad it's got, just finished the race. But at this stage, I, I just didn't think it was worth it. So I pulled in, sacrificed the whole race, sat in the pits, watched most of the people fall off. So, um, I mean, I was inevitably going to crash in that race anyway. So I saved myself from myself, effectively. But what that did mean was, what I hadn't realised was that it would put me so far down on the grid for the second race. So for race two, that put me second last on the grid. I was 31st on the grid. And Saturday night, I went to bed just absolutely fuming with, with myself, with how things had gone. Um, and yeah, I was just gutted. So I was going to start the race from 31st, effectively wiping me out of the race on the Sunday and 
I also didn't have a lot of confidence that we were going to be able to fix the problems we had um, going into race two. So yeah, I went to bed wondering what I was going to post on YouTube this week. And yeah, just sick of racing in general, really. But that all changed on Sunday. Sunday morning, I went out in morning warm-up. And to be honest, we still hadn't really fixed the problem we had with the traction control. And morning warm-up was okay. It was half wet, half dry. I rode round, still quite scared from the day before. I did my best. I always give 100% when I go out on a bike. I'll ride it to what I think the limit is for me and the bike and the conditions and that's all you can do sometimes. So I went out, tried my best, still wasn't sure anything would happen for the race. Went back to the motorhome, watched Taz. Taz managed to win the first race uh, on the Sunday in the dry. He came from 13th to 1st. So I was buzzing with that, I was really happy for him. But I knew I kind of just had to get through Donington race. One more race at Brands and that was me finished for the season. And I could sail off into the sunset, retired and away from all of this stress. But that is exactly where things changed and I just still can't believe what happened really. So Sunday, I, I walked into the garage before the race. Michael said to me, this is your last ever Donington Park. You better make the most of it because you're not going to get to do this again if you're going to stop racing. And there was four or five of my friends had come along because it's our local track. It's 10 minutes from where we live. And I just text them before the race saying, don't expect much in this race. I'm starting last and we, we can all just watch Taz after and, and enjoy watching Taz race. Just want to quickly interrupt this video with some very exciting news and a big thank you to temprocket.com who have come on board as a personal sponsor and they're going to sponsor this channel for the remainder of the season. Temprocket is a unique, powerful tool for finding and booking temporary staff. Harnessing the power of online technology, the platform transforms temporary staff recruitment by bringing the three key players, hirers, agencies and contractors together in one place to deliver a quicker, more efficient solution for all parties. 24 7 making life easier for contractors and freelancers creating more business for agencies and simplifying the recruitment process for the hirer temp rockets a win-win-win please visit www.temprocket.com for more information back to the video after I sat in the garage for a bit michael jokingly said to me where do you think you're going to finish and i said back sarcastically in the top 30 if i'm starting 31st he said well what about if uh, i'll give you a 500 good bonus if you can get in the top 10. i kind of just laughed at him when he said it and then he said if you finishing the top three, I'll give you a grand. And he laughed when he said that, and I laughed, and uh, I wasn't expecting, I mean, if I could have got in the top 10, I would have been chuffed because starting 31st, you're kind of just down and out really. And then the unthinkable happened really. I set off, off the line. I don't know how many people I passed off the start, but it must have been about 10 people off the line. I jumped a few rows forward, I got into turn one, went around the outside of a few more people, and I managed to come round on the first lap from 31st on the grid to 15th. And when I was in 15th, I kind of thought at this point, well, there's a chance I can get in the top 10 here. It's all's not lost. I might get this £500 that Michael had promised me. And the second lap, I come round, I managed to pass another five people and I came round inside the top 10. And when I came round in the top 10, I thought, oh, this is good. We've secured the £500. It's a shame about the £1,000 because they're still a, a, a mile away, really. They had most of the straight uh, distance on me, the, the leaders at that point. But then I just felt really good with my bike. What we'd managed to sort out was the traction control and basically the traction worked properly again so I could ride the bike hard. I wasn't having high sides out of nowhere that I wasn't expecting. The traction control on that bike, we basically have it working so that if you do high side, it will save you. But what was happening before was it was cutting in where I wasn't expecting it to. And then when I did ask for it, expecting the traction to cut in it would high side me so that was just resulting me in losing all my confidence and I was just getting worse and worse but from the first lap of that race I had the bike that I rode at Knock Hill at the start of the year and Alton Park at the start of the year and I just went for it and I kept passing person after person I got <laughs> probably one of the scariest and close to the edge passes I've ever done in my career on Chrissy Rouse so apologies to Chrissy but I got to the bottom of Craner Curves and I just got up the inside of him and before I knew it, I was overtaking him. And luckily I got through that, I made contact, but it was kind of just our two lines coming together. I got past him, um, chased down the leaders, set the fastest lap of the race. The super bike lap time, I think that day was, what did you do in race one? 29.7. And I managed to do a 30.8 in my race on treaded tires on a super stock bike, which the conditions weren't great, it was windy and cold, and yeah, I just, I don't know what came over me, but I just kept person, <laughs> passing person after person, and after seven or eight laps, I think, I got to the lead of the race from 31st, and then 
hung on to the lead, did my best to just gap Billy McConnell because I just wanted to get away from everyone and finish the race uh, at the front with a nice comfy cushion behind me. But Billy being Billy chased me down and hung on to me for the last three laps. I was fully expecting him to come past on the last lap. He can bit the screen, did one of his best laps of the race on the last lap to catch me. I held him off at the chicane and then we got to Melbourne Loop and Billy just appeared <laughs> on the inside of me like I knew he would. He outbraked himself and luckily I cut back underneath him, got to Goddard's the last corner, got through Goddard's and crossed the line just in pure disbelief that I'd managed to win the race from 31st on the grid. So at that point, I wasn't planning on announcing my retirement to the end of the season. I was going to wait till it was all done and dusted. But I saw Michael before my Eurosport interview and he said, just do it now. Now there's not going to be a better time to announce you retiring than that race. So that was it. Uh, I announced my retirement on Eurosport. I'll try and find the interview to put in now for you. Mackenzie from 31st on the grid, 11th row to P1. Uh, best race of your career? I'd say so. Um, I don't know. Lost my words. Um, uh, yeah, we, me and Taz have never actually won a race on the same day before, and I was pretty determined. Um, I've actually spoke to the team on Thursday, and I'm actually going to retire at the end of this year. So um, I wanted to go out with a bang, and uh, I, yeah, I can ride a bike. <laughs> you can ride a bike. That was never in doubt, Taylor. And what you did today was incredible, especially with the class in this championship as well. There's so much quality at every single turn. For you to come out on top, like you said, a weekend with your brother as well. It's a, it's a Mackenzie weekend here at Donington for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, where, where do you go next year from here? Are we going to see you on this side of the mic? What's your plan? Yeah, now I've composed myself a bit. <laughs> um, I've just I found it really tough over the last few years. And away from the track, you wouldn't believe how much stress and, and how ill I make myself at points just to go racing. And it's something I used to love doing. And I still love moments like this, but there's a lot more hard times than there is good for me. And I just wanted to prove to everyone that I can ride a bike. When the bike's right, um, the team sorted every, all the problems we had out yesterday, put it right today, and on my day I can pedal a bike around all right. And just a huge thank you to everyone that supported me over the years. Bathams this year have been amazing. I've also got Michael smiling behind the camera, he shouldn't be smiling right, because before the race he bet me 500 quid I wouldn't be in the top 10 and a grand I wouldn't be on the podium. We didn't actually mention a win bonus, so I'm, just tweet me what you think Michael should be paying me for that. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I just... Thank you, thank you to everyone. Cheers. Well, we love having you here, Taylor. You're a fan's favourite as well. I'm sure we're going to have a great vlog on YouTube after this race. Congratulations, you did it from 31st on the grid. P1, go and get that bonus. <laughs> See ya. Cheers. A massively emotional day for me. I'll do a full video on the exact reason that I've retired. And what I want to do is take you through my whole career from start to finish and show you the journey that I've been on that's led me to retiring at 28. But the long and short of it really is I've, I've just stopped enjoying my racing. For the, the, ro the rewards that I get from it, there's just so much stress and effort. Uh, and I hope I've sort of taken you on that journey with me and given you a bit of an insight into what goes on behind the scenes for me to go racing. Not just the training, but the trying to find money, trying to get into teams, the pressure of a race weekend, trying to win races. There's just so much that goes into this um, that really, to be honest, has just made me quite ill over the last few years. And it's not something I've really mentioned on camera, but I have now. And yeah, that's it. I've made my decision now. I woke up the next morning. Well, firstly, I should, <laughs> should explain what happened after the race, basically after the race. I went straight to the bar with my friends to celebrate retiring and winning the race and the rest is history on that night. I don't quite remember most of what happened. Viva Mackenzie! Viva Mackenzie! It was just the best way to celebrate it. We went out in style at Donington Park and when I woke up on Monday morning with Maisie the dog sat right here on the couch next to me, um, I couldn't quite believe what I'd done but at the same time I was also still really happy that I'm retiring, which I think says it all, that even after a race like that, I still feel like it's the right decision for me to stop. Uh, I need to look after myself before anyone else, and I'm still gonna ride motorbikes, I'm still gonna do this YouTube channel, I absolutely love making these videos, and yeah, I'm just gonna go enjoy myself for a bit. I've got no real plan with what I'm gonna do or, or where life will take me, but 
I'm just going to take some time off, carry on with my YouTube channel and, and see what comes along really. So I'm looking forward to the last round at Brands Hatch. It's uh, just a holiday weekend for me now really. I feel like I've done everything I wanted to achieve and yeah, go out and pull some wheelies, do some skids and I'll see you in the next one.